Hey, 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 beautiful people, how are you doing? It's Simone from Aspire to Inspire, your parent coach, youth mentor, and motivational speaker. I'm gonna scoot over this way, because I think that's a bit better, yes. And today, we're gonna be talking about the rite of passage. So the rites of passage, as I explained to you before, is kind of the life skills, not kind of, it's the life skills that we want to give to our children and to adults as well before they progress through the next stage. So again, imagine going into a mansion and there's multiple rooms, but you cannot unlock door number two if you haven't learned all the skills um, in that room. So that's how we're gonna kind of look at it, right? So before we talk about the personal rite of passage, I just wanted to find out how you guys got along with the previous episode, The Cycle of Life. Did you reflect on your early childhood, your late childhood? Are there some gaps? Do you create a safe and secure environment? Do you still set boundaries? Are you somebody who has no boundaries at all? I would love to know. So please make sure you comment in the box below. So welcome to episode number five think uh we're going to be talking about the personal rites of passage so life is a struggle from the womb to the tomb wouldn't you agree it's hard it's hard out here and it becomes even further complicated by ethnicity culture and gender the personal rite of passage is designed to break down stereotypes showing us there are more similarities between different ethnic cultural and spiritual groups then there are differences. And I'm sure I covered, I covered this in the ethnic, cultural and spiritual roots where we talked about traditions and customs. And what we found in our parent group is that we have more similarities than we do have differences. And I think it's very important that we prepare our children to succeed in life because it's hard, it's not easy. So the suggested activities that will follow will help you assist your child in making the personal journey from childhood to adulthood. So first thing we wanna do, we wanna help our children to develop interdependence. Now with interdependence, you've heard of independence. So I'm out here, I do this on my own. I don't need anybody's help, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you have codependence. So codependence is like, I have a problem. This is my problem. And then the other person who you're telling your problem to will be like, I will sort the problem out for you. Don't worry about nothing. That's codependence. And then you have something called interdependence. And interdependence looks like this. Where I will identify who, where, and what can support me. So we want our children to have that. We want them to understand what it means to be interdependent. So we do this by creating a high self-esteem, love for ourselves, but also uh, an extended self-esteem, which is love for the family and the community. So looking outside into the community and seeing it as a place of support, resource, etc. Number two, you want to help your child to recognize and understand, accept, appreciate and use his or her talents or gifts. If there's something that I hear all the time as a parent coach is, oh, my first child was so much easier, they're less challenging, they're, oh, this one's like this and that one's like that. Our children are unique. They have unique characteristics, which we'll be talking about tomorrow. Um, so it's very important that we highlight what their unique characteristics are, because when we highlight and when we get them to appreciate and to love their uniqueness, when they see it in other people, they will also appreciate it as well, okay? We don't want to know that person's weird. Not weird, they're unique, they're different. So three, help your child to seek out positive role models, adults who will serve as mentors throughout their life. Now, I'm not talking um, music role models. If they do have music role models, I think it's very good to have a conversation on why that person is a role model okay cardi b is not a role model for my child neither is beyonce they these are the people that i you know, i would have to question if my daughter said to me she's a role model she would have to give me <laughs> he or my daughter or my son would have to give me some valid reasons as to why that person is a role model 
And equally as well, whoever they present to you as a role model, does it tie in with your cultural, family and spiritual values? And I think that's important. So we want to help your children to identify positive role models and embrace that. Number four, help your child make connections with adults who will love, advise, guide and direct his or her life. Now, there's something in my culture that we choose godparents. And I know that's not a difference. It's a big similarity. You probably have a godparent also. But I've always been somebody who, when I think about godparents, I think about who would continue or who would uphold my values in my absence. And that's a very good place to start when we're looking at identifying people who can advise, guide and love our children the way that we do and based on our morals and values. They may differ slightly, but there may be still enough similarities why you would consider them that person. And again, knowing, giving your child the ability to choose based on the values that you presented to them, you're in a good place. You are starting off on a good, good footing, okay? What's also good is that if we can help your child to create a vision for their family, for themselves and their community. So over the last couple of years, vision boards have become like the big thing. Yeah, create your vision, the I am. If you say I am, then it will manifest itself. Mm -hmm. It will if you're putting in the work as well. So we want our children to create a vision for themselves, for their family and for the community. Be a part of that vision. What does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What are you doing in this vision? What are people doing in this vision? What's their attitude? What's the values? What's the morals? And you'd be quite surprised, surprised. Hmm. You'd be quite surprised just how valued your children already are or what values they already are. You might think, I never told you about that. Where did you get that from? You'd be surprised. So I do recommend you do that one. Number six, help your child to plan goals to achieve his or her vision. So we've created this vision now, but really and truly, how do we achieve it? How does it come to life? How does it manifest? So what goals can we put in place? Hmm? Think about that. Because sometimes it's difficult for us to do that as adults, to have to create this vision because we know the hardship, we've experienced it. So because we know that life is hard, let's get our children on the right foot in. Let's help them to create a vision and then set goals towards that vision. And it might be something I want to have a vegetable garden. In my vision, every person has a vegetable garden. So I want a vegetable garden because they can feed themselves and they won't have to go to the supermarket and we won't pollute the earth because we have to get on the bus and go to the supermarket. You know how children do. Okay, let's create that vision. Let's plant some vegetables. Yeah, and if they achieve the goal, then you know what you're modeling? You're modeling planning goals and working towards them successively. Oh, good stuff. Number seven, help your child understand that self-discipline and hard work are necessary. They are mandatory, compulsory, necessary. They need self-discipline. And these are the ways that which we can create self-discipline. And when they have a vision, they're more likely to tie into it. They're more likely to commit to it. They're more likely to succeed towards it. Number eight, help your child reflect on progress towards achieving his or her vision. So imagine now, let's go back to us planting a vegetable patch in our garden. We have planted a few seeds, give it a couple of days, a couple of weeks maybe something sprouts oh my gosh look at that oh my gosh it's funny can you believe that you did that and they can yeah i remember and we went to the shop and we bought soil and da, 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 da. but next time maybe i think we should pot plant it in a bigger pot can you see what's happening here now so this is all part of the personal right of passage and i hope you've enjoyed it i hope it makes sense so let me just reel through some of the activities that you can do for the personal right of passage. So you could talk with your child about your dreams and your ambitions for him or her. 
being careful to accept their ambitions also. So you might have ambitions and expectations and dreams for them, but they might have some for you. So when they tell you, don't be, oh, well, I don't think that's possible because I'm an adult now, embrace it and say, yeah, maybe we could work on that together. What about display your child's first drawing and paintings around the house and admire them? That's part of their personal rite of passage. When I was growing up, we'd never really had photos on the walls. Never really. We always had to look through the photo album. Um, but it's something that I value now. I love seeing pictures on the wall. I love putting like my children's drawings up. Um, I remember I used to love watching um, Blue, Peter, Blue Peter and um, the, not News Round, I can't remember the show, but it was on BBC One. And every, you know, every morning it started, there would be like a picture. And this is from Heather in Doncaster. And it would be a lovely picture and they would just be reading off all these names. And I would say to my mum, mum, please let us do a picture and send it in. Yeah, 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 we'll do it. And it never got done. And I didn't really see like my pictures from school at home plotted around. But when we do do that, when we do, you know, put their picture through forward through for a competition or when we do plaster all over their images all over their house, it gives them a sense of pride. It's part of their personal rite of passage. Now, I thought I was going to have time to talk about the spiritual rite of passage, but maybe not. I'm going to have to talk about it on episode six. Now, I hope you found this very insightful and has given you a lot of food for thought. I would like you to go away and complete one of the personal rites of passages with your child, with your partner, whoever. OK, so I. Yeah. So talk about your ambitions and or put some pictures up around the house, draw a picture, maybe plant something in the garden. I don't know, maybe do some cooking with them. I don't know, it could be interior design, but do something that contributes towards their personal rite of passage. My name is Simone of Aspire to Inspire, your parent coach, youth mentor and motivational speaker. I will catch you on episode six. Take care guys.